Here is the supply list for this video. You may want to pause your video at this point just for a moment to take note. I'll be using these colors in order on the supply list so it's easier to follow the tutorial. If you'd like to learn how to create other stones, please check out my book, The Secrets of Coloring, which is available on Amazon. It's a tutorial book. Before we begin, let's take a look at a real opal to see what sort of characteristics it has. Do you see those flashes of color? We need to get those into our drawing to make it look believable. Today we're using a page out of my Glamorista book. It's my gem page. And here you can see I've created opals in a couple different shapes already. We'll begin with a simple oval shape. By the end of this lesson, your opal should look something like this. Starting first with an intense color like yellow chartreuse, we will begin to add our flashes of green. The light source is from the upper left, which is why the highlight that's already drawn on the coloring page is where it is. First, we'll put some flecks that are going to become our flashes of green. We want to kind of keep them away from the highlight because they're going to stand out more on the darker side. I have begun now to use two different light green colors that are on your list. One of them is a little warmer and the other is a little bit cooler, which will just help to provide a little bit of variation. I'm using these two greens to go around the chartreuse color that I've already put down as flex, just to make them stand out a little bit more and give them a little bit more character. I'm going to begin to surround the highlight with the next two colors on the list, which are both blues. Watch how this makes the highlights start to stand out. I've used two different blues here, light blues, to sort of make the upper left hand side of the stone stand out. And at this point, I'm going to begin blending in with a little bit of a lavender color to kind of carry the coolness across the stone underneath those flecks that we've already created. Since lavender is very closely related to violet, and violet is across the color wheel from yellow, it means that it is its opposite. So if I use a little bit of violet around these yellow flecks or flashes, you'll notice that they start to really jump out, and that is my goal here.
I'm going to start making the stone look a little bit more complete by adding some reflected light on the right hand side, right by the edge. It's still sort of a light color, and once I'm done with using this orange color, I'll go back and between the orange and the lavender, I will hit a couple areas using a gray that's slightly darker than either of those two colors to sort of uh, pump up the contrast and create a core of this stone so it looks more rounded. I need to carefully get in between all of those flashes of green. If I go over them and cover them up, then they won't look right anymore. It won't look like an opal anymore. And I need to extend my gray a little bit towards the top and the bottom of the stone so that we can sort of see the rounded portion of the stone. Now it's time to start intensifying the color that I've already laid down. Opals have really strong flashes of green, so I'm going to go back in with my two greens and just kind of touch things up where I see little flecks of white from the paper left over and little areas that just don't look intense enough. It's up to you to put your flecks and intensify them as you need to. Now I'm going to use a white gel pen to subdue the dark line around my highlight. This coloring page was made to be used with numerous stones, so when we're using it with a light stone, we probably don't want that dark outline to show as much, so this is just sort of a simple fix for that. Final step using my pencils, actually the final two steps, I'm going to use my gray again to just kind of get in between and blend my violet back towards the left side and on the other side of the gray I want it to blend a little better with my reflected light, the orange. Now I'm going to use just a little bit of black, very, very sparingly, just to make the edges pop on the top and the bottom of the stone. I really don't want to put too much on the left or the right hand side or I will kill the intensity and the saturation of those colors. A little bit of blending. You can choose to use either your colorless blender or a white pencil. For an opal as light as this one, I prefer to use a white pencil because sometimes a colorless blender will darken our colors a little bit too much. I don't want to use the white everywhere or I will lose the intensity of some of the colors. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing a few places to blend together. And then I will need to go over some of them again a little bit more with some of my more intense colors to bring them back up.
I'm going to add a simple gold bezel to my stone just to make it look a little bit more finished and realistic. You can see that my light source, again, is coming from the upper left, so I'm going to leave that area the lightest, and then towards the lower right is going to be my darkest. I've used a basic combination of yellows, gold tones, and browns to create this simple ring around the opal. And I've gone back over it again one more time using my golden colors. And for the final touch, a cast shadow, mostly made up of grays and a little bit of the color from the stone just to intensify the shadow. I'm going to carefully and very lightly just outline a similar shape to the stone's bezel itself and then start filling it in with my gray. After using a little bit of color that you would find in my stone or the gold itself in the middle of my shadow, I'm going to intensify the edges just a little bit with some black, but very, very subtly. Before I call this complete, I'm going to take my temperamental gel pen and add a couple more simple highlights, just sort of reflecting off the bottom. And I think that that will make this look really finished. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel. And if you've enjoyed coloring these gems, you might love Glamorista. It's available on Amazon.